Welcome to your Algebra 2 lesson 2.2 and 2.3, Slopes and Graphs of Lines. So obviously the objectives for the day are to find the slope of a line and to graph lines. Remember that the slope m of a non-vertical line is the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change or the rise over the run. So it's rise over run. Uh, change in y over change in x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what is the slope of the line passing through the points negative 1, 3 and 2, negative 1? So we even have them plotted for you there on a little graph. So let's let x1, y1 be negative 1, 3. So x1 is negative 1 and y1 is 3. And x2, y2 be the point 2, negative 1. So x2 is 2 and y2 is negative 1. And now we'll use our formula. Slope or m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's make the appropriate substitutions. So negative 1 minus 3 over 2 minus negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. So negative 4 thirds, which is answer choice A. We can classify lines by the slope. A, a line with a positive slope rises from left to right. A line with a negative slope falls from left to right. A line with zero slope is horizontal, and an undefined slope is vertical. Okay, if you'll remember from Algebra 1 and Geometry, there are some pretty cool relationships between the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. So we're going to con consider two different non-vertical lines, L1 and L2, with slopes M1 and M2. So slope M1 goes with line 1, that's L1, and slope M2 goes with line 2, the little L2. Alright, so if the two lines are parallel, then the two slopes are equal to each other. And if we know two slopes are equal to each other, then we know that two lines are parallel. For perpendicular lines, the perpendicular lines um, are going to have slopes where the first slope is equal to negative 1 divided by the second slope. Or you can think of it as that the product of the two slopes, m1 times m2, is equal to negative 1. So lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Negative meaning opposite in sign, and reciprocals means you're going to do one over one of them to get to the other one. Tell whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we've got a line 1 through negative 2, 2, 0, negative 1. So here's a picture of that, negative 2, 2, 0, negative 1. And line 2 is through 4, negative 1, and 2, 3. Well, obviously they're not parallel. But let's see if they're perpendicular, because they could intersect and not be perpendicular. The way that we show that they're perpendicular is by showing that they um, have a slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. And then we'll look at case B. Okay, we're going to find the slopes of the two lines. So using our formula for the first line, the blue line here, we have y2 minus y1, so negative 1 minus 2, over 0 minus negative 2, so we have negative 3 halves. Then let's find the slope of the second line. And when we do that, we'll have 3 minus negative 1 over 2 minus negative 4. So that gives us 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. Okay, negative 3 halves and 2 thirds are negative reciprocals of each other, or you can look at the product of the two because m1 times m2 equals negative 3 halves times 2 thirds equals negative 1. m1 and m2 are negative reciprocals of each other, so the lines are perpendicular. Okay, if it had turned out that they multiply to be 1 or multiply to be any other number other than negative 1 and they're not equal to each other, then the lines are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Let's look at this second um, example. Okay, using the points that they gave us, here's a picture. Mm -hmm. Line 1 goes through 1, 2, and 4, negative 3. Line 2 goes through negative 4, 3, and negative 1, negative 2. So let's, they look parallel, but what if they are actually getting closer together and eventually going to cross? We have to look at the slopes to prove they're parallel. All right, the slope of line 1 
doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we've got negative 3 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. So we have negative 5 thirds. The slope of line 2, we've got negative 2 minus 3 over negative 1 minus negative 4. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 minus negative 4 is negative 1 plus 4, so it's 3. So again, it's negative 5 thirds. The two slopes equal each other. Okay, Because m1 equals m2 and the lines are different, you have two separate lines, you can conclude that the lines are parallel. All right, so let's look at the parent function for linear functions. The parent function for the family of all linear functions is y equals x. So we're going to transition from just looking at the slope of a line to looking at lines themselves, and this is the most basic one, y equals x. All right, so the coefficient of the x term is always the slope. Since the coefficient there is 1, that means there's a slope of 1. Because the line y equals x crosses through 0, 0, that is the y-intercept of the line. Um, recall that the y-intercept of a line is the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. The x-intercept of a line is the point at which the line crosses the x-axis, your horizontal axis. In this special case of y equals x, both the y-intercept and the x-intercept are 0, 0. Okay, so we're going to use slope-intercept form to graph an equation. All right, so first thing you have to do is write the equation in correct form by solving for y, and then identify the y-intercepts, the point 0b, where the line crosses the y-axis. That's why it's called slope-intercept form. You can find the y-intercept just by looking at the equation. Identify the slope m and use it to plot a second point on the line and then draw a line through the two points. So we've got an equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, so we can see m is negative 3 halves and b is 1. So the equation is already in slope-intercept form, so step 1 is not hard to do at all. Step 2, the y-intercept is 0, 1, so plot the point 0, 1. We know that right here because b is 1. So 0, B is the y-intercept. And then the slope is negative 3 halves, so plot a second point by starting at that 0, 1. That tells us where to stop, start. And then moving down 3 units. Okay, so we're right here at 0, 1. We go down 1, 2, 3. And then to the right 2 units, 1, 2. And it gives us a second point of 2, negative 2. Alternatively, we could have gone up 3 and left 2. Two, and that would also get us another point on the line. It would be a different point, but it certainly works. And then you just connect the dots, drawing in a line. You need to draw your line in, and you need to show that there are arrows on either endpoint. Actually, it's not an endpoint, but at the end of what you draw, you need to draw arrows to indicate that it keeps on going forever. All right, using standard form to write. Uh, to, to graph an equation. You're going to write the equation in standard form, ax plus by equals c, and then identify the x-intercept by letting y equals zero and solving for x, and then use the x-intercept to plot a point where the line crosses the x-axis. Step three, identify the y-intercept by letting x equals zero and solving for y, and then use the y-intercept to plot the point where the line crosses the y-axis and then draw the, a line through the two points. So we've got 2x plus 3y equals 12. Okay, so the equation is in standard form. Remember, it's something times x plus something times y equals the, another constant. A, big A x plus big B y equals capital C. Okay, and these two numbers should be integers and you want to start with something positive. Okay. So we're in standard form. So the first thing we do is we let y equal 0 and we solve for x. So we let y equal 0. So we have 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 12. So 3 times 0 is 0. So we get 2x equals 12 or x equals 6. So that means that when y is 0, x is 6. So our x-intercept is at 6, 0. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here. 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, and plot the point six, zero. Then 
we're going to let x equal 0. So we'll have 2 times 0 plus 3 times y equals 12. Notice we went back to the original equation. You want one 0 and you want one variable. All right, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3y is 3y equals 12. So we're going to divide both sides by 3 to get y equals 4. So we plot the y-intercept at 0, 4. So we can go up 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, at that point, we play connect the dots. So here's our 6, 0, here's our 0, 4, and here's our nice line going through the two points. Okay, there are a couple of um, special cases where you don't have both x and y, you just have one or the other. For, you're going to end up with a horizontal line whenever you have y equals just a constant. So the graph of y equals c is the horizontal line through 0, c. So y equals a constant is a horizontal line. Vertical line is going to come from the graph of x equals c, so no y in the equation. It's going to be the vertical line through c0. Alright, so we're going to graph y equals negative 1. The graph of y equals negative 1 is a horizontal line that passes through 0, negative 1. Notice that every single point on here has a y coordinate of negative 1. Okay. The graph of x equals 2 is next. Okay, so we're going to come over here and find where 2 is and draw a vertical line through it. So the graph of x equals 2 is the vertical line that passes through the point 2, 0. Notice that every point on the line has an x-coordinate of 2. We've got 1, uh, we've got 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. Down here we've got 2, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Every point on this line has an x value of 2 and that's why it's called x equals 2. Okay, guys, this um, should have been a really good little review over slope and um, equations of lines, and so you should be ready to go for the practice problems, the problems to try on your own. If you can't do them, either go back and watch the video again or come in and get some help from me, but remember to get full credit for your notes. You have to have done the problems to try on your own. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. I'll see you in class.